Hey friends, we're learning C Sharp. We have spent some time in lists of things, lists of strings, lists of integers. We can do sorting, we can search them and find uh, the index of something. If we take a look at our code right here, we have a list of integers. Maybe this is a list of scores uh, of a game perhaps. And we said numbers dot index of. I said, give me the index of this number 99, which ended up being 0, 1, 2. But then we sorted, we sorted that index here, and that index changed, and we see now that I found it at index 5. So sorting changes things. But I don't really feel like I'm querying this. It doesn't feel like a database. This feels very low-level data, yep. David. And um, I was told there was a language-integrated query. Can you make this better? Yeah, of course. Um, so there's a, a feature in C-sharp uh, called link. Um, it stands for Language Integrated Query, and it makes working with collections of things much simpler. Okay. Right? So let's bring an example over. We're here in Microsoft Learn at the overview of Link. It's pronounced Link. Link. And I'm just going to grab this example and copy it over the top of ours because it's a little bit more uh, organized. There's a couple of things going on here. We can see at the top where we said array of integers, scores. And this is the new way to do array initialization. You can do it even newer. <laughs> is there even newer? Because they're newer popping way. a thing up here and yeah. they're saying... It's saying, come on, I have a hint for you. I have a hint for you. Is that you a, a collection expression, that's right. Oh, wow. It got even, it got even smaller. <laughs> yep. It changed from curly braces to something else. Can I use a list of stuff, though? Because you I can. Like, I like doing lists, right? Yep. So we said var scores equals new list of integer. Or you can actually do, actually try one thing for me, undo, the, undo that, you don't control like that. Z yourself. Okay. And then change the var to be list of int. List of int. Yep, there you go, that works. Oh, that's nice and clean. Yep. This is an example of what they call syntactic sugar. Sugar, yes. All right, if you got something, you sprinkle a little syntactic sugar on okay, it, you sprinkle on it, makes it a little bit better. That's right. Right? It doesn't matter. Sugar in this case is just makes it a little nicer, but it's the same both ways. Right. So it's important if you're learning C-sharp to not get overly worried about this stuff. The meaning. It didn't change the meaning. It, that's a great point. It did not change the meaning. But we have a list of scores. And if I want to go and find all of the scores that are over 80, I could go and write a for loop, right? And I could say for from 0 to scores, oops, scores. And then I could say, oops, dot, com, yep. dot, I need to know the length yep. of that. Thank you. And then I could say console dot right line. Uh, I probably need to put an if around it, if. Uh, and then I have that integer. I need to say scores at i is greater than 80. So you're combining your knowledge of loops, um, conditionals, and ifs and string interpolation. Yep. Right. And then I could say, found a score over 80. That is, and then I got to go and grab that thing again. So I got to say, scores at i. And right. there you go. So I am manually walking over the list of integers right. for all of them. If I found one over 80, then I would, I would, it would spit that out. And I think that would probably work. Look, looks right. Yeah. Um, and then there's another way, though. Let's actually test this. Can I just exit out of here? What's a way for me to get out of here? Let's say return. Yeah. I'm just going to bail yep. quickly. So we have a list of scores. Let's see if we can find the ones over 80. And let's test that. Now it warns me. Ooh. That's a cool one, isn't it? Yeah. Unreachable code detective. It's telling me, of course, that I, I left. You stopped early. Right, and I never could get to this, this line. So that's that little warning there. But it said I found three scores. I'm just saying, David, that didn't feel very integrated yeah. or very query -ish. It felt imperative and explicit, and you're going through every step, de deciding how you're going to grab each number, compare it to 80, and then print it out. Right. So introducing this language integrated query, right? So this allows you to query data expressed in simple ways, in simple, right. simple ways. 
So this is integrated into the language. So I've copy pasted this one here. So let's get rid of mine and let's have you explain what's right. going on here. So this is often referred to as declarative programming. So we have imperative where you're declaring every single step. Do a for loop, declare a variable, compare to the list. So you're describing every single step about how something happens versus describing what you want. So from score in scores, this is like declaring the variable in the for each. Var names in names, mm. the scores, the, the score in scores, same pattern, right? That's a great point. That feels very for each -y. It is very for each -y. So you're saying for every score in scores, where score is greater than 80, and then we have a condition, just like the ifs and whiles and for loops, right? Select score. So this does actually describe, do a for loop, increment variables. You're just saying, look at all the scores, find ones over 80, and give me that score. And it's interesting that it's not saying how. Exactly. It didn't, you're not giving a, a formula or in a series of instructions. You just said, get it done. I don't care how you get it done. I don't care how, exactly. Okay. Yep. But then you had this thing called an I enumerable, not a list. You didn't say list event. Yep. Could you have said list event? No. So this is, this is turning, doing a query against your list or array or any kind of data source. That's this. So I have a right. list. I want to point this out. That's a list of events. But what pops out of here isn't explicitly a list of events. Correct. You can, you can make it a list, but right now it's in this in-between format that you can use to enumerate. You can, you can ask for every item inside, this, inside of this enumeration, mm -hmm. um, and you can choose to turn it into a list if you want to. But the thing you can do with this is you can for each it. Yeah. Right? Right. And when we talked about enumerating stuff before, that means numbering it and right. putting it. The trick is next, it doesn't next. know what the next one is until you ask for it. So you're basically getting like a breadcrumb and then another one, another one. And you have yeah. to follow it all the way down to the end. It's a good example, yeah. It doesn't know. It, is, it just knows that it is something that can be counted. But it doesn't at this moment, if I understand correctly, at this moment right here, it doesn't know how many there are. Correct. It doesn't like do it right. at line five. Is that correct? That's right. It's okay. a it's concept called deferred execution. Okay. So you declared that you want the score query to represent this expression of all scores of all scores that are more than 80. Okay. And you have this, this breadcrumb that represents that query. You have to actually try to evaluate that query by doing a for each to make it work, to, to make it um, activate, to all activate right. the query. So that means that score query is not the answer. That's right. It's the question. <laughs> that's, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> OK. So the question is now in the variable called score query. And then with our new and wonderful friend for each, we can say, we give me the answers. Say, give me the answer. And what we're actually doing is funny. You don't see this, but you're going, give me the next answer. Give me the next answer. Give me the next answer. And then it finally goes, uh, that's it? OK, cool. Exactly. So we're for eaching over the question saying, give me the next one. And the result is a lot cleaner chunk of code, isn't it? That's right. Let's see if that works. We'll go back in here. We'll run it. And I would expect, Beautiful. there you go, the same exact thing, right? same three numbers. But remember before, we talked about the importance of this list of int where int is t, any type. Any t. Does that mean I can do, I can do uh, link on any t? Correct. That's so right. then it doesn't have to be just numbers. I could be people, pets, friends, family, cars, databases. That's right. JavaScript. I don't know HTML, <laughs> like cats and Anything dogs you want. living together. Yep. Mass hysteria. Yep. Doesn't matter. That's cool. So it really is integrated into the language. Another thing worth pointing out is these syntax highlighting. Yep. You know, sometimes when I think of a query. I'll think about like SQL or SQL and the query is in a string and you end up tunneling something like select star from books. Yep. And that's not language integrated. Right. You're basically taking a second language and pulling it into C sharp or whatever language you're in, JavaScript, as a string. It's not integrated. There's no syntax checking on SQL inside of your C sharp program. But link actually has those blue keywords from select, where, in, 
That's part of the language integrated query aspect of, of Link. Right. right. And it's really important to just pause here for a moment for all of us and think about what we've already learned because it's all starting to fall together. Yep. This is the thing. We've got different basic types. We're mostly doing ints, but we saw decimals and floats and, you know, doubles oh my. We saw strings, and we understood briefly that strings are made up of characters. Characters, that's right. right. Uh, and we can for each over stuff. We can for loop over stuff. We can index into things. All of those concepts are coming together with link. Yep. And now any object that I can think of or even diverse sets of objects could be put into a pile and enumerated. And queried and yep, that's right. Right. And then in future videos that we'll see from other friends, they're going to go and use link to query databases. Yep. And that's really, really interesting. So that's just a, a taste of, of link. We'll take a break and we'll come back and dig even deeper into language integrated query as we continue to learn C Sharp.